Hello, welcome back to your Daily Dose of Dominions, turn 76, where the battles just keep on coming. Um, I'm going to not go through every single one of these. Uh, I will just go straight to the map after skimming over the important stuff, what sieges are going on, how damaged everything is, just damaged and damaged, so nothing's broken yet. Uh, which would demand my immediate attention. Get a Sitta, and I cast a couple of projections. Helheim Prophet, not a big deal. Let's just take a look at the strategic map and see what the current situation looks like. I'm moving apace with my rating in this direction. I cut them off from about 90-ish uh, gold, 100 gold this turn, so that's alright, um, as well as a bunch of um, gems too. Ooh, alteration bonus. I guess that'd be cool. Um, he immediately takes back both of the forts that he has. This one is very interesting because we get a glimpse at Aramor's next strategy. And the reason why he wanted all those nature gems from me. Yep. That's why. These guys. Tartarians. Which is not surprising, seeing as he's had Well of Misery up basically like 10 turns now. Um, so there's that, that I'll have to deal with. I'm not overly concerned, because again, Astral Nation at this point is going to be able to just... Um, paralyze or soul slay those guys and uh, astral spells like that auto target large hit point masses so uh, Tartarians or let's say a monolith <laughs> if you guys watched that battle that I had where my monolith got sniped by a soul slay um, from a different game those are the kinds of things that get hit first rather than like a random Ermorian soldier with a paralyze. So even if he sends an army against me with two or three of these guys, they'll get paralyzed pretty quickly if I've got more yogis or gurus than this in the army. Not particularly concerned. Uh, He's not cutting straight into my lands, he's sort of swinging around this way instead. And I'm going to meet up here. Uh, this will be good because then I'll have my back to another army, so if he does move and with a force that I'm not seeing and makes me retreat, I'll just retreat into the next square over and consolidate that way without losing my whole force, which is always a risk when I'm doing big cuts into his land like this. So yeah, there's Tian Chi, and again, I think this is Tian Chi's province here as well, so we'll just sort of skirt the edge of that. And I don't really, unfortunately, expect to be holding any of these, but I'm putting one PD in there just so I can see if slash when he takes them. I'm going to keep moving out and uh, just sort of gobble up any seemingly empty or free provinces I can get with uh, little old guys like that. Hang on. Yeah, okay. Um, and I am building a palisade here. And I am building a palisade here with a horse commander that I recruited. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to hold either of those, though, unfortunately. Um, Helheim moved on here with um, a pretty substantial amount of his remaining forces. This is AI Helheim. So that's just being annoying, but um, I don't really have anything to be able to go up against that right now. Aramor moved a group of guys on here, um, and I did get my Siddha, but unfortunately with Siddhas, they have um, innate teleportation, but that doesn't work for um, moving like outside of a uh, province that's being sieged for some reason, um, because they're not stealthy. So that, that would be why they would be able to just teleport. Um, but 
Yeah, that's one way to lock these guys down if you know about that. I don't know if it's a bug or if it's uh, working as intended or if it's just something that was over uh, looked over as an oversight. Um, doesn't really matter because they have Astral 3 so they can just cast Teleport. you never really able to completely pin these guys down. Um, in the meantime, I didn't really know what to do with him. I don't really want to waste Astral Pearls to teleport him out of there. I don't have a dire need for him to be anywhere else. I do have some gear that I would give him. I would probably give him this would be nice, which I picked up from one of uh, Melkworts. I'd give him this. Um, making him harder to hit is better than um, boosting up his protection or giving him stuff like regeneration. Um, one downside of Siddhas is they only have one miscellaneous slot, probably because they have like four hands. So then I'd probably give him shield, helmet, chi boots. Um, if I give him a spear, that would be over the ambidextrous bonus, so then all of his attacks would be going down. So like, see, now it's, um, this is 11. Um, oh, no, it would, it would work. Okay, so I could do that. Um, and then give him like that. Uh, yeah, and then those would be okay um, in terms of attacks, but yeah, his attack skill is not super great. What do I have to boost that? Um, could give him that for now, but I should get him like a. I don't know. What can I even forge? Oh, yeah, and I'm fasting, uh, casting Fairy Court. Uh, about time I did that, honestly, because Fairy Court will break me into um, air in a much better way. Still won't be able to forge, um, whatchamacallit, the air helmet in order to get boosters going proper like. But this will be high enough air to cast things like uh, Great Eagles and stuff like that, which would be good for fort cracking. If I were to move into that domain and my air gems aren't really being used a whole lot neither are my earth gems and so I think next thing I'm gonna do is cast uh, king of elemental earth and hope that they're not all taken because I am really not keeping up with that do I have it yeah I have it yeah so I can cast uh, king of elemental earth it would be nice to get uh, queens of elemental air and Water, I'm not going to be able to do because I'm never getting in the water, never getting in the pond, so those are perpetually out of reach for me. But if I can get the two elemental earths and then um, the queens of elemental air, that'll really boost my thugging capabilities and mobility, especially the air ones. But even the fairy court. Uh, the fairy queen would be highly mobile because she's flying and stealthy so that would be great and then I can just give her some eagles and she can sort of raid around much faster than just you know one turn at a time like I'm doing here mercenaries nope research still going for alteration 9 and I'll get that in three turns basically and then um, breaking into enchantment some more enchantment seven will get me mm, tree lord meh gifts of health I probably wouldn't actually do um, hmm or maybe I would I'm not sure I guess tree lord probably is what I was initially looking at but I could fight over earth blood deep well or something like that probably lose um, yeah master generation is really what I want but that's much too far away for me I think unfortunately um, and all my sacreds already have regeneration anyway so it's not that big of a deal what else I think that's pretty much it for this turn these this is how these turns are going to B basically moves, counter moves, seeing what is currently happening in the world and reacting to it as well as trying to 
uh, formulate some sort of strategy and push in a specific direction. Right now it's just raiding, hopefully to do something to keep him off balance. I want to take a look in these forests. I feel like he's had them for so long that he probably doesn't have, like this one, a whole lot of PD there. Um, I'm not moving with him there because he's got Airmore right next to it, so he could he could catch me there with both forces from here and here, and I'd rather um, give him moving targets to try and hit. But once I get my Sita decked out, like something like this, but I really want something that can be that can give him a boost to an attack. Um, I don't think really Air or Astral can do that. I could give him Swords. Uh, swords usually give you a bonus to attack. Uh, Enchanted Spear also, I guess. Uh, this spear does. Uh, this is pretty cool. This is a nation, uh, uh, national only item that I can forge. It's length zero, so I can stick a bunch of these on him and not have his attack affected. Um, and it does lightning and shock damage, so that's pretty cool. Uh, he can already cast lightning bolt, so that's not a big deal. So yeah, that'd be pretty neat. Costs 10 astral though, and I really want to use my astral for other things. Now I want stuff that can be forged with air, like dancing tridents. But that's not super great to put on a guy who has only one slot. Um... What can you get? Nope. Cat Charm would give more defense. And that would really help with the not being hit part. Because... No, I don't want him to go berserk. Hmm. Well, maybe you guys could, in the comments, put something in there for like a... Hey, try this out for size. Um, idea for a build with uh, these slots and what kinds of things I could forge. I have access to Earth, Astral, Nature, and those cross paths as well as uh, water. Oh, I do have fire. I have um, fire with these guys, and they can cast burning. They can make burning pearls. So I might. I could do I could have done something like that. Obviously I'm not going to because this game is over, but I could have done something like that and I might keep this in mind for future games if I want to do like uh, thugging out or something like that. These guys are really fun to have thugged out. See attack 14 is much better than attack nine. just saying. Um, yep. so that's my current strategy. It's a, just a slow burn. I have to recover from the massive losses, and I'm not even really doing that. I just really want to fight Airmore right now, I guess, and also deal with Hinnom, or Helheim AI, sorry. So, yeah, that's all for this turn. See you guys tomorrow night for next turn. Have a good one.